Hello all, my name is Krishnak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, many of you had actually requested me to create PyTorch playlist completely from scratch. So today this is the first video uh, of PyTorch where we'll be understanding some information about PyTorch and then probably I'll also be showing you about the installation, how you can actually install. Uh, every day I'll try to put at least one video so that at least we'll be able to complete. We'll try to see some of the important things in PyTorch like tensors, how we can perform different types of operation, how we can perform back propagation with the help of PyTorch. Uh, this is an amazing library altogether, guys. I hope uh, you have used uh, TensorFlow Keras for doing your deep learning stuff, right? PyTorch is also a very, very good, uh, handy tool. Many companies nowadays are actually using it uh, because it has a lot of advantages. It is very, very much compatible with Python code. You know, you will be just be able to just write Python code and with the help of that, you'll be able to implement all the things that are necessary in PyTorch, you know? So you'll basically be creating classes, you'll be using a lot of hoops concepts in order to do all these things. But yes, uh, don't worry about it right now. We'll do it completely from scratch. We'll learn most of the things. Uh, before going ahead, guys, I uh, really want to show you what exactly is PyTorch. So in PyTorch, just go and see in Wikipedia, it is an open source machine learning library based on the Torch library, okay? So this is basically the library on which on top of it, it is actually created. Um, and it is used for applications such as computer vision and natural language processing. Again, amazing library altogether, guys. I have, I've been using from past one month, one, one and a half months. I've been exploring more, doing some extensive things, you know, uh, deep learning things like ANN, CNN, LSTM, RNN and many more things. So it will be very, very much fun and you'll be able to do a whole lot of things with respect to that. And many people are also saying about uh, the unsupervised machine learning and deep learning. Probably I'll be using PyTorch and I'll be showing a lot of examples. So this was developed by primarily by uh, Facebook AI Research Lab. Uh, it is a free and open source released with under the modified BSD license. That basically means if you want to really use it for your industrial purpose, you basically have to uh, you you have to use this license on top of that and probably there will be some changes that you have to actually do okay uh, although python interface is more polished and the primary focus of development pytorch also has a c++ interface so because of this when compared to the other libraries it will be pretty much fast a uh, number of pieces of deep learning softwares are built on PyTorch, uh, including Tesla, Uber, uh, Hugging Face Transformers. If you know about Hugging Face Transformers, guys, um, if you know about BERT, right, a lot of things are there. And many people are basically saying that, Krish, why don't you start uh, deep learning from scratch? Guys, uh, I've already created a deep learning playlist uh, in my YouTube channel. For theoretical stuff, you can actually check there. For Keras over there, you can actually check. I still need to upload some of the videos like attention models. Uh, uh, there is transformers, there is BERT. Uh, I think this this basic things I need to cover over there and probably a lot of coding also I'll be doing. I'll, I'll be completing that, but I really wanted to start the PyTorch library and I've been working from past two to three months in this extensively. So uh, what does PyTorch actually provides? It provides two high level features, one tensor computing like NumPy, so that, you know, if you don't know about deep learning, if you don't know about ANN and all, it's internally a lot of matrix multiplication will be happening, right? Uh, multiplication of inputs, weights, bias, and many more things as such, right? Um, and you can also create a deep neural network uh, built on tape-based automatic differentiation system. We will be discussing about that as we go ahead. Okay, now here you can see that uh, Facebook operates both PyTorch and convolution architecture for fast a fast feature in embedding, but models defined by the two frameworks were mutually incompatible. So uh, in short, they have actually come up with this PyTorch and now it is being used ex extensively by everyone. So this is just the basic, don't worry about automatic differentiation and all, I'll be just telling you more about it as, as we go ahead. Now this is uh, the pytorch.org website that you actually have. What are the key capabilities? You can see over here it is a production ready transition seamlessly between eager and graph mods with Torch script and accelerate the part to production with Torch server. We will be discussing about this because we, I'm also going to show you with respect to the deployment. It will be really, really fun. You can go through this particular website and see this. If you really want to install uh, just manually pytorch, you can actually use this. Uh, you can actually take the stable build you can select uh, your operating system. You can select which package you want to basically install. Python, this, this, this. CUDA, okay, this is also pretty much important, guys. CUDA, if you have GPUs in your system, right? And at that particular point of time, you know, based on the GTX, whatever GPU uh, or NVIDIA graphic cards you have, like suppose if I have GTX 1650 and uh, the CUDA version, uh, in my case, I've actually installed 10.1 
right using this i can actually use this particular command that is what it actually says but today i'm going to show you a much more easier thing i'll not worry about the cuda right now okay i already have cuda in my system i can also show you that cuda is already present over there but what in this particular video i'll show is that i will try to install not only this uh, pytorch uh, library or torch library itself but instead of that i'll also try to use uh, some other libraries like um, numpy uh, uh, numpy i'll be using numpy pandas seaborn matplotlib so that i'll be using all together we'll be creating this pytorch playlist from scratch we'll create it in a new form of environment we'll install all the libraries over there so to begin with guys uh, i have a github over here inside this github i have actually created i, I have actually created one pytorch underscore env dot yml file if i just open this yml file guys here i have given my environment name should be env pytorch channels you can see defaults and pytorch dependencies what all dependency library i'm actually covering is basically all these particular libraries okay the pytorch version that i'm using is 1.1.0 okay you can use the other version the other version is basically if i just go over here right and if i just go inside this so you can also have 1.5.1 okay if you really want you can also check with that uh, let me do one thing let me just write it at 1.5.1 okay this is the latest build probably that is actually available right now what i'm going to do is that uh, this is just like a requirement.txt file guys okay in requirement.txt what we do is that we just put all the dependencies library right so if i show one example over here this is how i put all the recommend uh, requirement.txt how, how i put all the libraries but this time this is the first time that i'm showing you in the form of yml file this is just to give you some additional knowledge you can also create a requirement.txt put it put all these particular libraries and all but in that particular case first of all you need to create a uh, environment and then you have to basically install all your libraries separately that i've already shown in my previous video but what if if i have an yml file how should i basically install it okay so this yml file i have over here now what i'm going to do quickly is that first of all i'm just going to save it i have all my versions i'm using jupyter notebook also over here and i will also use some kind of jupyter notebook the python version is 3.7.3 seaborn is this scikit-learn is this uh, if you want to also improve your scikit-learn let's see uh, which is the latest scikit-learn version so i'm just going to write it as uh, scikit-learn recent version okay latest version or the recent version i think it is 0 0.23 0 0.1 i'm just going to use this 0.23.1 so that i will be able to use it from the latest version itself okay just to keep some of the things i've just done it guys but it is up to you whatever version you want to use make sure that you can put all those things right now what i'm going to do over here is that uh, i will just go and open my anaconda prompt so here is my anaconda prompt you can see that i'm in the same working directory where my yml file is actually present okay so why, where my actually yml file is actually present so what i'm going to do is that first of all you can see if i write dir over here right i can see uh, my pytorch underscore env dot yml file is actually present now if i want to install this because understand inside this you have a python environment okay so you can see that what kind of environment it is it is basically going to create the environment name as env pytorch and then it is going to install all these particular libraries uh so what I'm going to do over here is that I'll just go and write one conda prompt. Remember, for this, you require Anaconda. OK, this is the process of doing in Anaconda and everything. Everybody, I think everybody has Anaconda environment and has the Anaconda tool itself. Right. So here I'm basically going to write the command as conda env create minus F. OK, pytorch underscore env dot yml. OK. So when I write this particular command, make sure guys, that particular file should be present, that YML file should be present. So I'm writing conda env create minus f pytorch underscore env dot yml. Now once I press enter, automatically it will create the new environment. <clears throat> it will create a new environment and it will start installing all the packages that are basically required. Okay. So here you can basically see how the installation is actually taking place. Okay, so we'll wait for some time till the installation takes place. Then probably the new environment that is env pytorch will get created. 
so we'll wait for some time or uh, let me just fast forward it if you really want okay i'll just be fast forwarding it for some time So guys, the installation has actually taken place in order to verify the installation. What I'm going to do is that I'm just going to activate the ENV PyTorch. So, so guys, now I have actually activated the ENV PyTorch, which I have actually installed by just writing conda activate ENV PyTorch. Now after this, I will basically want to check whether uh, my libraries are actually working fine or not. So I'm just going to write Python and inside this, what I'll do is that I'll import torch. Once I import torch, I will uh, see that it has got executed fine. Then what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to check out the version which was present inside that. And once I executed, the version is 1.5.1. .1. Remember guys, I've already done the setup of my GPU in my system where I've installed the right compatible libraries of CUDA and CUDA CNN library itself. So probably if I want to check whether this torch or this particular setup is working fine with my GPU or not, I can basically check by just writing torch dot cuda dot right is underscore available so if i write like this you will be able to see that it is saying true that basically means my setup is correct if you don't know about the setup guys just go and check in my deep learning playlist there i've explained you about that how to do the installation and how to install the right compatible cuda and cuda cnn over there how to put up the path in the environment variable everything i've explained but still if you if this is coming as false right that basically means you first of all you don't have a gpu if you have a gpu probably that particular setup is not ready but don't worry as i told that i'll be starting this particular playlist completely from scratch everything will get covered in the future i'll be explaining you about how you can actually use the gpus also now uh, let me just find out more information about my gpu like uh, what is the device id what is my gpu name so for that i'll just write torch dot cuda dot current underscore device so this this will actually help me to get the device id so this is my gpu device id that is zero so if i write uh, my device name if i want to really get my device name, so what i'll do i'll just write torch.cuda.get um underscore device right and if i execute it okay i think i should basically be writing uh, get underscore device name sorry for that okay so get underscore device name and here i have to give my id so here it is basically saying that, okay, it is GeForce GTX 1650. That is my laptop uh, GPU. And then apart from that, if you really want to check that how much memory is also being electrified, suppose if I really, if, if, uh, if some of my program is actually using GPUs uh, by using this torch, so I can also use GPU torch dot CUDA dot memory underscore allocated to check how much memory is basically allocated so here it is basically saying zero because since i have not run any code now after this guys uh, you know i'm already in the location of pytorch i'm just going to clear the screen and here i'm basically going to say jupyter notebook to launch my jupyter notebook and if you remember guys i've installed jupyter notebook separately in that particular environment itself so here is my untitled i pynb file which i had recently created and here you can see that if i import torch and see my torch version it is also showing correctly absolutely fine now this was uh, the basic installation type what i'll be doing is that the yml file i'll be uh, committing over here Okay, once the YML file is available, this YML file, you can basically take this, download that, uh, run from this particular GitHub repository and probably what you can do is that you can actually, uh, you know, install it in your local. So what I'm going to do is that quickly, I'm going to uh, commit it over here in front of you. So let me just go into my D drive, okay. Uh, machine learning and DL projects. Let me just go to that particular working location where I have been continuously creating PyTorch videos. So that particular folder will be put up everything inside this, uh, right? So everybody can actually use that. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to drop that file over here. Once I drop this particular file, you can actually download it from there. The link will be given in the description. You just have to do and follow all the steps that I've actually told and probably you will be doing a lot of things, a lot of interesting things. We'll play with tensors. We'll try to see how to do back propagation. We'll be doing a lot of things, guys. It will be pretty much amazing. Then we'll also try to implement ANN, CNN, RNN and various things as such. Uh, one important thing, I've also started exploring unsupervised deep learning projects and probably with the help of 
torch i was able to do a whole lot of things so yes guys this was all about this particular video i hope you like it please do subscribe to the channel if you have not already subscribed i'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you one and all bye bye